Um, welcome to a second of our little seminar series on homological stability and number theory. And Craig Westerland would tell us about stable homology of grade groups. Thanks very much for the opportunity to, to visit and speak. It's, um, computing earlier, the last time I was here was 18 years ago as a postdoc. So um, it's, uh, it's really delightful to be back. Um, yeah, so the, this is a part of, uh, I'll be talking about the, this joint project with uh, Jonas Bergström, Adrian Biakno, and Don Pietersen. Um, we'll be um, talking some more uh, after this and then, and then again tomorrow at the, the project. Um, so, uh, and please, if I'm, this is, there's a lot of different things in this talk, in this talk, a lot of different subjects in this talk. So if, if something's unclear, please just shout out and I'll be happy to try to clarify. So um, let me, let me sort of start with, with my object. Uh, so I'm going to use the same notation that, that Jordan was using yesterday. So Compen, although maybe you had superscripts. Um, is going to be a set of uh, <coughs> n-tuples, uh, z1 through zn. Uh, in, uh, in this case, I'm going to use uh, the uh, open unit disk. I'm going to take n-tuples of points in the open unit disk um, and mod out by the action of this metric. There are unordered uh, uh, configurations of n-points in, in, the, in the unit disk. Um, and there's a map, uh, there's a function uh, from the configuration space point of uh, 2G plus one points uh, to the moduli space MG1. Uh, so the one means one boundary component uh, and uh, moduli curves of genus G with one boundary component, um, which uh, sends a uh, if I write this multi, this set as maybe z underscore, uh, it sends z underscore uh, to the, the hyperelliptic curve, which I had a notation for it, right? Yeah. Call it sigma sub g. And what it is is the, the curve whose affine equation is uh, y squared equals of the product of uh, from i equals 1 uh, to 2g plus 1. Uh, X minus Z. So the hyperelliptic curves that uh, uh, where the poles are at. Uh, so your configuration spaces and distinct points? Yes. Yeah. What's, oh, gosh. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's so um, it, it's like just part of my brain at this point. You're absolutely right. I, I want to say the ZI is not equal to ZJ. Uh, so this is a uh, right, function that carries a configuration to the moduli space that uh, the configuration gets up to the hyperelliptic curve uh, where the branch points have the, the configuration. Uh, and uh, right, so um, as Jordan told us yesterday, so fundamental of the configuration space is the grade group of G plus one strands. Uh, and the fundamental group of the moduli space is the mapping class group. Um, the mapping class group um, has, a, has a further homomorphism to uh, SP2 to Z. Um, and this is by the, the action on the first homology of the, of the curve. Um, and uh, which I'm going to write this as just uh, V sub G. Uh, some, I'll eventually drop the Gs. Um, and so I get, a, I get a representation of the grade group uh, on this uh, V sub G. Uh, sorry, I, I guess maybe. Maybe I'll be focused on the, the rationalization. And uh, so our, our goal is to, uh, is to study the topology of these great groups 
um, with coefficients in the not just v sub g, but various linear algebraic things I can do to the so uh, with coefficients in sure functors applied to uh, v sub g. So this is the here lambda partition, and this is the, the associated sure functor, and. That's our, our goal. Um, it is perhaps too much to achieve as stated. Um, what we will instead try to do is study this uh, uh, stably. In G. So I'm putting the genus of the curve go go go. You know, another thing you could do is take a higher degree branch to cover. Yes. And it, would that be similar? So yeah, a lot of the, um, quite a lot of the techniques that I'm going to describe today will work for cyclic covers of, uh, of any order, uh, so super elliptic curves. Um, the, uh, some of them will work for general uh, branch covers with, with your favorite group as the deck transformations, um, but the actual uh, Translation into number theory. Well, we don't know how to do that yet. So, with your S lambda, you take irreducible of one of these and of the two feet. You don't want of this of simplectic. Ah, thank you. Yes. So, um, what is actually of interest is the, the symplectic one. Uh, the, I, I, the story I wanted to tell will be easier to tell if we use the shore functors, um, just because of the, the way that it works. You can derive the symplectic, the formula for the symplectic ones from that, but uh, um, that's an extra step. All right. So um, what do I mean by stability here? So let me just... Have that uh, so stability. Um, I have this this picture in mind. Of, here's my disk with uh, a bunch of points, uh, and then to that I get associated a curve. Let's see, I set an odd number of points, so to that I get associated a curve, and then to that curve I get associated a matrix. So here's a here's something in my in my great group. Uh, and here's something faster. Uh, here's something symplectic. Um, <clears throat> and stability uh, involves adding more points. If I want to stay within odd uh, break groups, I'll add two points sort of near the boundary. Um, and that corresponds to adding a handle uh, to the curve. Uh, and that in turn corresponds to. Uh, Taking your symplectic group of your, your matrix of adding a little one zero zero one in the corner. Um, so these define maps uh, from these break groups to D two G plus three one G plus one to S P two G plus two. Um, and and everything in sight is consistent. Uh, and so what we can do uh, is we can we can let's let topology be infinity with coefficients in S lambda of V now with no G specified be uh, the direct limit as G comes to infinity. That would be two G plus one. That's that's what I want to tell you how to sort of of these, these spaces. Even if you use to have a curve on the infinity, can you also take an even number of points? Uh, so the, I normally think of the even number of ramification points as uh, corresponding to uh, mapping class group width. 
Uh, is that is that what you were thinking? I can. Uh, I no, but no, no. I was completing. Uh, closing, closing. Yeah. Uh, so there will be there will be a map, and I I don't. I, it, it will be an isomorphism in a range that I'm not entirely sure how good of a range it will be. Uh, the, the question of the range in which we have stability isomorphisms is going to be a central topic in, in Dan's second talk. <laughs> All right. So, um, there are a lot of these S lambdas, um, and I want to package them together in an efficient way. To do that, let me talk a little bit about uh, symmetric sequences. So, uh, the symmetric sequence. Is a, is a collection of F R, where these are uh, these are, uh, representations of S of R of the R symmetric group for, for all R. And uh, two uh, symmetric sequence, you can define the, the associated um it's uh, uh unfortunately i'm also going to call it f uh, it's an endo functor of the category of vector spaces whatever whatever field my uh my representations are over so you really want to present if and not as some of these class of uh i uh, I do not think the distinction will matter for this talk, uh, for this talk, but uh, um, so I will take an actual representation, but I think most of it will pass to the smarts and classes. Uh, uh, the, the end of the functor that it defines is F the sum over all R. Uh, Here, where the symmetric group is acting on the uh, on the vehicles by permutation, um, and this is a nice, uh, very nice construction. As if you've thought about operands, have seen it a lot. Um, but uh, notice that if I that I can recover the f of r's from the functor if I by choosing more and more complicated d, I can extract. The representation from it. Um, let's also let's write lambda uh, for the ring of symmetric functions. Which I will confuse with the sum of all of the representation rings of all of the symmetric groups. So I'm a little what is what is this tensor over SR? Uh, take the common variance on both sides. So that's um, so the common variance in that tensor product. Yeah, I mean, if you want a purely algebraic definition, it's the tensor product of the brain of these two okay. modules. Of these okay. two. Uh, um, so I think, uh, so let's take the, the ring of symmetric functions regarded as the sum of all the representation rings of all of the symmetric groups. Um, and I can, I get a class, uh, which maybe I'll write on square bracket stuff. Um, Sorry, symmetric function in some kind of thing. Infinitely many variables. Yeah. So this is going to be um, the sum over all R of the Frobenius characteristics of uh, the terms in the. In the symmetric sequence. So 
take their, their image, uh, regard them as representations, and take their image of the symmetric in the ring of symmetric function and uh, the ball. Um, great. So this language, uh, the language of the ring of symmetric functions is going to be very efficient for packaging. So, sorry, maybe I don't know. So if I take the standard representation of SR, well, which symmetric function does it correspond to? Not just the, uh, wait, what I'm just trying to normalize the notation. This guy lives in Lambda, right? This square bracket. Guy. Yes. Yes. Okay. And just so I understand what CH means, if I take the standard representation of SR on C to the R, yeah. well, what, is, um, what is what is CH applied to it? The first power sense? The first power sense for any R. Yeah. Okay. No. No. Wait. Am I getting it back? No. What, what, what is the standard representation? Is it R dimensional? It's R dimensional. It's S R plus S R minus one comma one. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, So, can you uh, say a little more about this? Three <laughs> 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 of symmetric functions. Right. Uh, so, down to earth, maybe. Sure. sure. My, my, okay. So, lambda is uh, um, the inverse limit uh, of the, uh, the ring of polynomials, symmetric polynomials uh, of these guys. Uh, and uh, there is a genius character. Wait, I will cheat because I can never remember the formula. Um, so if if uh, w is a representation of that star, um, right there, uh, then I can define uh, w. Um, to be, what do I do? I one over R factorial, the sum over elements of SR of the trace of uh, uh, acting on W um, times the power sum symmetric function associated to the partition coming from tau. Uh, lambda tau. Where uh, the partition of uh, R uh, defined by the cycle type of tau. Um, and this is this function is an isomorphism from the representation ring of SR onto, uh, onto this. This guy. Okay, so this is the character of the corresponding representation yes. of GL under sure value duality. Yes. So we really want the sum and not like the limit? Like that requiring compatibility of the representations and taking the there's, there's no compatibility between them at all. Uh, yeah, there, there could be one, uh, one of them could be, I mean, you could be, you're welcome to just take a single representation of SR and then all the other ones be zero. No. So we can remind people are the key lambdas. The these are the power sum symmetric functions. So they're the sum of that index to uh, xi to that index. Cool. So <laughs> there's a <clears throat> operation uh, on lambda called platism. You can't see it right over here. So okay, all right. Let's get a little bit more uh, platism. This is an operation. Uh, <clears throat> you might talk a bit louder. Maybe else. Sure. Yep. Uh, so platism is a operation circle from lambda and so lambda. Lambda, um, and it has the property that uh, <coughs> if 
if I take an analytic functor and look at its image in the uh, symmetric functions, and the plethysm of that with another one is <coughs> computed as the class of the composite of the two analytic functors. So these are the analytic functors are endofunctors of the category of vector spaces. So I can compose them. There's a binary operation on endofunctors. Um, there is a corresponding binary operation on some on the of symmetric functions that, that implements that. Um, I do not want to try to write it down. Um, all right. So what we can, let's just define an element uh, C. Uh, the sum for all R greater than or equal to zero plus H sub R. This is now the complete symmetric function. And uh, the complete symmetric function. Oh, uh, the sum of all products of length arc, all products of all, of all monomials of length arc. Yeah. So maybe a more useful thing to say is that uh, it's not h sub r is the character, the trivial representation. Or, uh, symmetric group. Um, and that formula is going to uh, justify the following thing. Let us define, so for uh, x and lambda, let's define the plethystic exponential to be uh, E that is in the X. Why is this a, a reasonable definition? Um, the trivial representation of SR is like, a, I mean, it's like a point modded out by SR. That's one divided by SR, one divided by R factorial. So I'm summing up one divided by R factorial of various powers of X. That's the formula for the exponential. Um, so this x has a logarithm, has an inverse. Um, so there exists there's a inverse. So I get my realization correct. So uh, well, I'll just call it log. Uh, and now I can state the, the theorem. Um, and I hope uh, that you and Jonas and Adrian don't mind just refer to you by your initials as well. <laughs> there. Um, so there exists an equality of generating functions over, over lambda, um, which is in the following form. Uh, the sum over i of the sum, whoops, over lambda of the dimension of hi of the infinity with coefficients in s lambda of v. Uh, times, so this is um, so generating function. The so so this is the the formal variable uh, is going to be z. So right, it's minus z to the i. Uh, then times s lambda prime. So that's the conjugate partition. Um, Right, so this is a generating function which knows everything that we were asking for in the board that I have inconveniently just erased. Right, it has all of the ranks of the homologies of the, the stable homologies of the break groups with coefficients of the S lambdas. Um, so this can be computed in terms of these x bin log. So x 
z inverse log uh, z plus the sum from j to j greater than or equal to zero of h to j z to j minus one. So, so what do you do? Uh, you take you start with this generating function z plus the sum of all of the even uh, uh, complete symmetric functions. Um, take its logarithm, shift it by z inverse. Throw away there's a one because these uh, these guys end up canceling. Remove the one and then exponentiate back. This is missing. Where does <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Where's yeah, minus one? Yeah. Where's the log? Yeah, it's it's one the log of this. No. I think the last parenthesis, the last bracket is kind of invisible. You can only see the last part of it. So ah. put that on. It is inside of the exponent. <laughs> yeah. What are you saying? There is this in the pod. This isn't a pod. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 kind of you to believe me that this is an equality. So yes, <laughs> I I I guess I I'm using there exists to a shorthand for there is. There is and here it is. <laughs> So, in principle, that tells you all of the that tells you the answer. Um, I cannot promise you that if you have your favorite partition, that it will be easy to compute uh, that answer from for that. Yes. Yeah. How exactly are you defining log and x on the with power series with the formal variable? Yeah. So they, they carry them along. Uh, am I doing this wrong? Uh, um, I'm spacing out for a minute. Uh, I think it ends up just being the normal exponential log of power series. No, no, it does no. Uh, yeah. What ha what happens is that P R acts on Z as by sending to Z to the R. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A really naive question. The maps between these different rings are sending the last variable to one. It's zero. The, it's zero. But then you're like, since they're symmetric, that should kill. Oh, I love that. Right. That's zero. Zero, zero. Yeah, zero. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, there's like, for instance, x1 to the x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5. I decided that I could just set. So you have two other sequences of groups which you could ask exactly the same thing. Do you have the do you know the answers for oh for methodology for the mapping class group? Yeah. Uh, for MG and for SP. Uh, so for uh, SP, I assume you know the answer, but how, how do they for the mapping class group? That's a theorem of Oscar Rem uh, Yeah, it's a different formula, I think. But uh, and our our method is based on well, I sorry, the, the formula is originally uh, due to Loyanha uh, and Oscar has a different uh, proof of it that we're we're borrowing. <laughs> and other group. And the well, aren't they all zero? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we're all zero. I mean, I guess how general is this? I mean, the stable range stuff is, I understand, is very subtle. But, uh, this this is very this is what I'll maybe tell you about is very. <laughs> um, uh, it is no. It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, so some of it is robust, uh, um, but it is very tied to the geometry of surfaces. Okay. So it, it, I I wouldn't know how to make it work for the symplectic groups. Okay. Um, right. So let me tell you a, a little bit about the the methods. Um, yeah. Hyperelliptic surfaces background space. Oh, 
So what is our setup? So let's let uh, X be uh, a space of the Z mode two action. I want it to be a face space. Um, and let's define H G of X in the space of the following pairs. It's going to be uh, Z and F, where uh, Z is a point in the configuration space. Uh, is this one. And uh, F is a function from the associated hyperelliptic curve to X. Uh, and I want it to be rel the boundary to X rel the base point. So continuous maps from hyperelliptic surface into X that carry the boundary to the base point. And I want it to be this map to be Z mod 2 equivariant. Um, so there's a, I told you what it is as a set. Uh, I haven't told you what the topology is. Uh, the topology, if you, if you guess, it's probably right. Um, but as, as points move around, I mean, one of the complications is that as points move around in the configuration space, the domain of this function changes. Um, so how do we, how do we handle that? Um, there's a nice way to do this by choosing a, a standard representative for this surface and describing the configuration space as a uh, quotient of a diffeomorphism group. You can build it that way. Um, happy to say more about that later, but, but maybe this isn't the, the point here. Um, so this what's, is a- What's the case for the sigma z we have in line? Uh, the, base, the base point? Yeah. Um, the, I, I really think of it as uh, it's not necessarily a base space, but once I mod, once I quotient the boundary to a point, it becomes a base space, and that's the that map. So, um, right, so, so theorem. Uh, so let's let A be graded actual vector space. Uh, uh, the graded object in the category of vector space. Um, and let's let uh, X the associated Ellenberg McLean space. So space is how much of the groups are equal in degree blah or equal to A in degree blah. Um, and I'm going to make this a Z mod two, a space with a Z mod two action. Let's let uh, as follows. So let's let Z mod two. Oops. A. Multiply elements of A by minus one, and that induces an operation on the island of the plane space. <laughs> then uh, <coughs> the homology of this space, H G of K A, with rational coefficients, uh, is equal to the sum of lambda. Of the homology of the two D plus first group uh, with coefficients uh, <coughs> S lambda of B shifted by one, shifted down by one, uh, tensored S uh, lambda of A. So the thing that we want to compute which was here, or at least even the unstable version of the thing that we want to compute uh, are the coefficients of the analytic functor that this defines. So, okay. so coefficients of the 
fun color. A maps to the homology of H H G A uh, is what we want to compute. Uh, oh, uh, V is, remains the uh, first homology of the hyperlift curve. So, unless I screw up, it will that will be the only use of V in this talk. What's H G of K? It's this space, uh, space of oh, that's, okay. I see. And K is what was X? Yeah. So, um, so what does this do for us? Uh, here, the thing we are or on the right-hand side of this expression, the thing we're trying to compute is the group cohomology of B two G plus one with coefficients of S lambda V. That's the thing we're after. We've translated this into something about computation of the cohomology of this space of hyperelliptic curves with a map to. An island break of clean space. So, um, and there's a question of whether I try to do this. So, so in the beginning, you put it in degree one, but when you apply the full functor, you forget it is in degree one, but you put it in degree the next the value of that. Yeah, so I, I wanted to keep. The one in here because I'm putting all I'm computing all of the homology simultaneously, so it will shift the degrees. But of course, the sure functor applied to a shift will involve will, will give you the the conjugate. But we'll, we'll, ah, the sure functor of the conjugate that, partition this becomes s lambda dash v shifted by. Uh, Like it, is the, the thing on the left actually double doubly graded because uh, you have the grid like which which degree you, you choose for your island eight space? Uh, I will be agnostic about it. This holds for all of them. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it in particular is allowed to be in many different degrees. So, sorry, well, it's like it seems that your right hand side doesn't depend on. Ah, uh, okay. Um, this is a proof of this is actually maybe a fairly straightforward uh, computation with the serif spectral sequence. So I'll omit it, but maybe if you have questions at the end, I, or if maybe you don't have questions at the end, I can I can include it at that point. Ah. So then, uh, so. The thing we want is on the right side, so we should try to compute the thing on the left side. So uh, let me tell you. So, so now let's let's try to compute uh, the, the limit to times infinity of the homology of the space of hyperelliptic curves mapping to the And actually, what I'm going to describe will work for any any uh, space size. So here's a definition. Let's let uh, P of X be uh, the homotopy pushout. Diagram. So let me write it down and explain it. This one cross over x On earth are we doing? So x upper z mod 2 are the z mod 2 fixed points of x. Um, 
x lower h z mod 2 are the homotopy orbits under the, the action of z mod 2. Um, there is a residual action on the fixed points. It's just trivial. Um, there's an inclusion of the fixed points into x that induces an include a map from the homotopy orbits to the homotopy orbits. But also, there's a circle action that, that moves through the element of pi 1 that's in the z mod 2 direction. So this map I want to call evaluation because we can, we can think of it as evaluation of a, of a loop. There's a certain sense in which you can think of these as loops in there. Evaluation of a loop on a, on a, a point in the circle. What's S prime? That's S1, it's the circle. It's an S1. Yeah. Yes. Don't confuse this symbol with that symbol. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, no. I, I, am, I am now fully into topology and will we'll avoid uh, any sure functors from here on out. Yeah. These little H's of the subscripts. Um, the, um, so without the H, I'm taking fixed points or orbits with the H. I'm taking homotopy fixed points or homotopy orbits. I'm sorry, what's P? What's P, P of it? It's the thing I'm defining. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, this is the push out of the rest of the diagram. Exactly. So what is a homotopy fixed point? The part that's in the pass to the transform. So, um, so for a for a fixed point, um, there is uh, right. So if if let's let's say this is what X looks like, and then I have a fixed point in the when I form the homotopy orbits. I could, for instance, take E Z mod two to be S infinity. Uh, and there is a element of then the fundamental group, say based at that point, or a, an element of the fundamental group based at that point, uh, is, is Z mod two, moving uh, along a half of a meridian of S infinity. So that S one is rotating along that uh, S infinity. All right. The evaluation of the fixed point and an element of the circle and moves the circle through the circle in S infinity that is marked by it moves, it implements the fundamental group being Z equal to half going through. Through that point, the generator of Zima. Okay. Um, all right. So the main um, topological theorem of our paper uh, tells you how to compute this uh, in terms of that. So the limits as g tends to infinity of the homology of h g of x uh, is isomorphic to the homology and now I'll write it in terms that will make the homotopy theorists happy and I'll explain it in just a minute. So this is omega 2 of uh, P of X. This is a uh, base maps two sphere into P of X. Uh, and omega 2 naught are the, uh, the null homotopic ones, the, the space of uh, degree zero. Everything is bounded. Everything is respect to base bound. Yes, 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 sorry. And our base point here is, uh, for instance, the, the common base point if in here and here. Okay, move together. 
And what's the lower star on that? Uh, so the lower star, yeah, there's there's a lot of unnecessary stars in homotopy theory. Uh, here I mean base maps, so let me just say that. <laughs> okay. um, so if you're not a homotopy theorist, you might regard this theorem as uh, bad news. Um, the theorem, the thing that we want to compute is the homology of some terrifyingly large function space. But it turns out, if you are a homotopy theorist, this is the point where you, you say we win because we're, we spent 60 odd years developing techniques for computing the homology of function spaces. So this is in fact good news. Um, I can say a little bit about where the isomorphism comes from. So this is implemented. So this is where they exist. <laughs> <laughs> There exists an isomorphism. There does exist an isomorphism. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so implemented uh, by a scanning map. Um, so I'll tell you what it is on any one of the finite stages, H, G, and X. Uh, to Loops to have P of X. Um, and what does it do? Remember, a point in here is a configuration of points on a function to the, uh, from the hyperelliptic curve to, to X. Um, and it's much easier if I draw the picture. So um, let's see. Let me, for simplicity, just draw two points in my configuration of points. And then over it, you now I'll try to be an algebraic geometer and try to draw a, a hyperlyptic curve as a one-dimensional thing. Um, and they're branching, the branch points are happening there, right? You want another number of points. I do want an odd number of points, but there is only so much room on the blackboard. <laughs> uh, so this is my, my configuration of points. This is my uh, surface, sigma sub z. And I additionally have a, a function f to x, so this background space x. Um, and from that data, I need to give you a function from a two sphere to p of x. Um, and what I will do is, I should have done this better. This is the same thing as base maps, sorry, maps of pairs from the disk relative to the boundary to p of x relative to so space point. But rather than telling you a map from a sphere, I will tell you a map from a disk. Immediately, here's a disk. Um, let me take T to be an element of that. So what do I do? I take, here's my point T in the disk. And I can lift it up. Let's say the, the, hyper, the map from the hyperlyptic curve to P1 is, is P. Um, and the, um, <clears throat> and what I can do is I can take T and I can lift it upstairs to uh, P inverse of T. Uh, I can map those either one or two points over to X. Um, and it's either one or two, depending on whether it's uh, a Weierstrass point or not. And, uh, but you can say that the map, so Z F gets sent to the function from the disk P of X, which is given by T maps to the class of F of P of T, um, where this takes, requires some explanation. This is in one of two things. So if T, if the preimage of T was two things, then that gives me two points. I map it over, I get two points in X. I want to get one point, but conveniently the homotopy orbits turn that into one point. So this is in uh, X H Z mod two. If uh, T is not 
100 pi. Um, and it's in it's, uh, the fixed point of it. And I get lifted up to one point um, and it maps over, but because that one was a fixed point and the map was equivariant, the image must also be a fixed point. And it's maybe not obvious from the you know, piecewise definition, but this is constructed so that that's a continuous function. This is an integral homology equivalence or a rational homology? It's an integral. Integral. Uh, this is one of the points at which doesn't need to be seen up to any, any group uh, and any, uh, yeah, any, any, uh, any covering group will work here. Um, but it's a different space. In the, it's a different push up. Uh, right. I am certainly not going to be able to say much about the proof. Um, let me. So, are we meant to? Am I meant to give you ten minutes to ask questions, or should I? Should I push on? If you want me to push on? <laughs> okay. Um, then let me uh, let me tell you how you get from from here to here. Um, so, uh, all right. So, uh, a, a sort of well, let's let's talk about how to compute now. The homology of loops to e of k of a is rational, right? Because if we know that by uh, this theorem and that theorem, then that that computes. This stably. Right. Let me just call this P because there's much notation already. The quick lemma that is not too hard to prove is that P is rationally isomorphic uh, to the quotient of the Allen Bird McLean space by the Z mod 2 action uh, measured with the two sphere. Um, loosely speaking, you can sort of pull the S1 out and then you take a push out of S1 to a pair of points that gives you an S2. And then the rest is it's just going to be the helmet of the orbits for the this two action. So you care about the K of A uh, in, in genuine uh, equivariant helmet W3, right? Like the, the, that's an actual fixed point and not a homotopy fixed point. Yes. So is it unambiguous what how you're what it means? <laughs> That's fair. Uh, so um, I think it is unambiguous rationally. Uh, take a moment. So um, what I certainly mean is uh, um, to build the Islandberg McLean space from uh, as the or maybe I should ask what is the fixed points of Z mod two on K of A? Right. So the uh, we are going to get the. So the cohomology of this is going to be the Z mod two invariance of the cohomology of K of A, uh, and uh, that will end up being right, cohomology of the. The, the orbit order or, or the fixed point is the fixed point of cohomology. The, if I'm working rationally, the, the homology of the orbits is the same as the fixed point. The, the orbits of the fixed points agree by a transfer argument. Um, 
So I want a functorial map from graded vector spaces to spaces that, that is the eisenberg mclean vector. And uh, the mod two action is going to be pushed forward from the same mod two action on, uh, on, the, on A, which is where I saw it. Now, uh, how to, I would do a bad job of trying to say what it should be. Can you transform A into some simplicial object of which you take this as space? But I'm going to give me a moment to think about that. But you're interested in A being a rational vector space anyway? Yes. Probably the fixed place should just be contracted. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I completely misunderstood your question. Okay. Yes. Yes. The fixed ones are, are indeed, yes, contractible. Yes. I completely misunderstood your question. Sorry. Um, right. So, um, right. So then, how do we? So, so, we need to compute the homology of the double loops of this space. So first, to do that, what we can do is uh, let's start computing this. I just seem to write computer. So the first step is computing the homology of P, the rational coefficient. Maybe I want the cohomology of P. Um, and it is going to be the cohomology Main space, then taking the uh, C2 invariance, right, <laughs> by this transfer argument that I was saying, um, direct summing with the homology of uh, P I mean, not, maybe there's some reduced thing that we need to be careful about. Um, this is the graded symmetric algebra on A. Uh, and when I take the Z, what is the Z mod 2? Action do it multiplies every element of A by minus one. So all of the odd terms die and all of the even terms survive. So this whole thing becomes the even part of the symmetric algebra. Uh, and uh, I'll write this as like a co product. The co product, the cohomology next to is an exterior algebra on the uh, two dimensional um, algebra. Great. So that's the cohomology. Um, you can compute the cohomology of its loop space by the Eilenberg Moore spectral sequence. Uh, loops on P. Um, normally, I can do this by the, uh, and if I say, I'd rather say the homology. Loops on P. Uh, this is the X algebra of the previous. Um, but it turns out that this is Kazool. Um, right. Uh, and uh, I have two minutes, so I'll tell you why. Um, so this thing is just the Kazool dual. So this thing equals tool. And if I, uh, uh, all right, so let me try to tell you how to describe that. Then um, it's Hilbert series. It's F of TZ is the sum of each 2R T to the R plus Z squared T sum over R. So what do I mean by this? T is the length grading in the Kozol algebra, and Z is the homological grading. 
Um, this z squared is the degree two. Oh boy, that's the uh, that's the wrong one. Uh, for the the Hilbert series of p. This um, the degree two element is the degree two element, and the sum of the h two r's is coming from the even terms of the symmetric algebra. Um, so the causal dual, the Hilbert series, is gotten by uh, this sort of standard inversion. Uh, the Hilbert series uh, for the cohomology of omega p uh, is then one over half of t over z. Which ends up being one over t to the r z to the minus r h two r plus t z. And the length grading was helpful for computing the causal dual. Sum. Sorry. It has to be a sum somewhere. Oh, what are? Yes. Goodness. Uh, the length grading uh, was useful for computing the causal dual, but is not uh, actually relevant to the final answer. So we, we can sort of throw it away. Uh, we'll be getting uh, one over uh, the sum z minus r h to r plus z. Great. That's the Hilbert series from the cohomology of the loop space of P. I can pass to the. All right, I'm going to. Very rapidly say that uh, I'll just say in words at this point. Um, then the logarithm is extracting the primitives from this. The primitives, the primitives of, of the cohomology of the loop space are, are the rational homotopy groups of the space. So they're the homotopy groups of this space. I shift them by one to make it the homotopy groups of the double loop space. That's what that z inverse does. Uh, and then I exponentiate back to get the homology. Way too fast at the end, but that's the, the, the shape of it. Thank you for your patience. Questions? So the reason that you're able to get information about the dimensions of specific groups and not just Euler characteristics is it that this causal thinks so. I in the are the homology groups of A all A type or yes. It's not even obvious that they should carry a any algebra geometric structure because the stabilization map is not obviously algebraic. <laughs> and I mean like gluing is not algebraic, sure. but but it turns out um, Maybe I'm not sure if Tim is going to be talking about this or not, but there there is a some there is a version of stabilization which is sufficiently algebraic for you to make sense of that. And they are all of tape type, uh, and depending upon your normalization, it's like minus two i plus the length of lambda. That's the way. Yeah. Right, so again, we take a to b here to get the the quality first here. Um, you don't. Um, the point is that by getting it for, we want a, a form, an answer that, that is true as a functor of A, from which we can ex conclude that the coefficients of that functor are or what this uh, says it is. That said, if you want to pick off the computation for a particular value of lambda, plugging in a particular A, Probably give it to you. So, yesterday, Jordan gave us a bunch of different group uh, coefficients or different representations corresponding to different spaces. Um, so, do we just like change the configuration space and the definition of HG to other things and compute similarly, or is this very specific to this case? Um, so, we can. Uh, 
it's an open enough, enough question that I'm going to choose to interpret it very broadly and uh, say um, there are some things that that can be easily modified. Um, so uh, I think that if instead of having a base being P1, you could have base be, the base being an arbitrary curve. Um, instead of having uh, um, hyperliptic curves, you could have other types of branch coverings and equivariant maps. And some of the computations should go through for these variations, but uh, uh, some of them, some of them will not. Uh, and and I, I don't imagine that varying those things will, will change much. But if you're interested in pushing into different kind of statistics over uh, over function fields, then it is, I, I, I would presume it going to be a very different sort of setup if you wanted to, rather than counting. So I've done a bad job of advertising Dan's talk. He's going to use this to tell you something about moments and L functions. If you wanted to study other arithmetic statistical uh, conjectures, you probably want to vary the coefficients in an interesting way. And that seems to be a somewhat nonlinear process of figuring out what your coefficients are supposed to be for that story. So should I follow up on that and ask you if you can sort of stack this? Because now you have a two to one cover of P1. Yeah. Can I do a two to one cover of a two to one cover <laughs> of P1? Yeah, I mean, I think um, probably the natural way to do that I mean, depending on how you choose, want to choose to count it, I think the right thing to do would be to regard that as a fourfold cover of a certain sort and try to run this sort of argument in that setting. And, and depending upon what... What I want is D4 out of this. Oh. <laughs> I, want, I want to somehow do this and then take away all the four to one cyclic covers and all the Z2 cross Z2 covers. I see. <laughs> Essentially. Um, a lot of it could be set up and some of the computations will go through, but I'm not, I, I can't say whether, whether everything you want to go through will go through. Okay, thank you again.